I've seen a lot of tutorials about how to make graphics with Motion 5, but not very many about how to make video effects. So I made my own. Here it is. So your first step is to open Motion. And the effect that I made, I decided to make it a generator so I could put it on top of other layers. I like to use the same settings that I normally use, 1080, 2997 frame rate. So here in Motion, I began by importing a, a, an image that I could use really just as a placeholder to help me visualize the effect that I wanted to make. So I applied that and filled it to the screen. So I want to make an effect that looks like a character is seeing stars. And the best way I found was to go into the library and particle emitters. And I looked around in here for a while and um, all of these have their own behaviors already set. They can be modified, but I tried to find one that was closest to what I wanted to do to save myself work. And um, I settled on this one called Threads and Debris. So I click Apply and then position the effect where I want it to go and resize to fit. Now this isn't exactly what I want. I don't like the threads in it. But the cool thing about motion is that many of these generators and effects have different parts that you can turn on and off and tweak independent of each other. So I can just turn off the threads and leave the other part, the debris. Then if you go into the inspector window, you can adjust other parameters. I can adjust the speed, which also affects how far away the particles go. And I want them to just be a little bit wider. And I'll just keep tweaking that until I get it about right. When I send this to Final Cut Pro, I can always adjust the size of the effect or generator in there using the transform tool. But I want it to look close to what I think I'll want. And other parameters that I um, might adjust in here, the colors, if I don't like the green color, I can choose any other color I want here. And the cool thing is you can do all this work in motion once, get it the way you want, and then send it to Final Cut, and it'll be that way, it'll stay that way. But if you do want to be able to make adjustments in Final Cut, all you have to do is click on this little arrow and choose Publish for each of the parameters that you might want to adjust later. Click the arrow and from the list, Publish there, will send that parameter slider or whatever it is into Final Cut so that you can tweak the effect each time you use it. Now one thing I don't like about this effect so far is the way the sparkles and dots are right in front of the character's face. I'd like to avoid that and I'm going to do it by making a mask to block the effect from that area. So I choose the Bezier mask tool. It might be helpful to zoom out a little bit because I'm going to go outside the edges of the frame while I do this. And I just click around the edges of the character and make a rough human shape because I know I'm going to be using this effect mostly on a person. And so if I can make a mask that's roughly the shape of a person, then I can use that to block the effect. So there's my shape. If I go into the HUD, I can adjust roundness to make it a little bit better. And the cool thing about using these mask tools like the Bezier mask is that you can adjust each of the dots afterwards. So, But this isn't a mask yet. It's just a shape. The next step I have to do is create an image mask by clicking on Object, Add Image Mask. And then in the Inspector window, there's a little box that says Mask Source. So I drag the shape that I just made into that box and it turns the shape into a mask. Now in the HUD, I can invert the mask. So what I've done now is I've blocked out everything inside the shape that I made. So if I play this video now, you can see that the sparkles are blocked 
by the mask. I'm about ready to save this and send it to Final Cut Pro, but first I want to disable the placeholder layer because we don't need to see that when we get to Final Cut. So I just uncheck the box there, and that's what the effect all by itself is going to look like. So to save this, click on File, Save As, and you'll get a prompt here. I already have created a category, Dance Generators, so I just need to give this one a name. I've made several others, so I'm calling it Scene Stars 4. And then click Publish. Now, when I switch over to Final Cut Pro 10, I look in the Generators tab, and I see the category I've created, Dance Generators, and there is the effect that I just made. I'm going to find a clip that might call for someone seeing stars and then park the playhead where I want the effect or generator to go and then I just click on it and press Q to connect it. Now when I play you'll see the stars they're small and they're not in the right place but what you can do is just reposition the effect using the transform tool. I can resize it and reposition it so it's closer to the character and then play it to see what it looks like. Let's try it on another clip with a darker background so you can see it better. See the stars are very small for this image so I resize them and you might find it easier to resize using the inspector window and the transform tool the slider in there so I can make the stars nice and big to fit around this character's head. So if you want to make the stars or the effect slower you make the clip longer and it slows the speed down. Now this slower speed looks a little bit more like what it's like to see stars so I like that better. But if you look right here closely, you can see that there's a sharp edge on the mask that I made, and I don't like that. I should have applied feathering to the mask. Well, it's not too late to fix that, and I'll show you how. If I go over here and control click on the generator, there's an option open in motion, and it opens the project back up. So then all I have to do is click on the shape and then look in the inspector and there's a feathering tool and I just crank the feathering up here it softens the edge so that the little dots appear very gradually now and then I choose save now back in Final Cut the generator has been updated but what I've applied to my timeline has not been. So I need to reapply the generator and go through the process again of transforming, etc. Now because I had to transform this and make it so much bigger, all the stars got bigger too. And I think they're kind of a little too big. In the transform tool, I can't change the size of the dots without changing the whole effect. But if I click on the generators tab, here are the published parameters that I saved when I was in motion. So I can change the color right here. Now I can change my mind and make the dots blue or red or whatever. And then um, other things are published here, including a scale slider. I can make the dots themselves smaller without changing the overall size of the effect. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah. Ooh. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You can do a lot of work in motion once, and then you can make yourself an effect that will work in Final Cut with just a minimum amount of work each time you use it in the future.